because nobody, no one in the world was prepared for, for this situation. As you know, uh, I'm uh, responsible for risk management as well in, the, in our company. Uh, one of the points that we really uh, concern, uh, we have uh, the concerning of, uh, of risk management is the fact that what can happen with us that we really don't know. As an award emergency, the Peruvian government uh, acted fast and detected measures to fight against COVID. Uh, the first and the most important, the government stopped all economic activities except the ones considered essential. Unfortunately, uh, the mining sector was not considered essential. So going straight to the point of our discussion, um, even though Latin America was one of the last regions hit by the pandemic, the impacts were fast and top down. Talking about the main steel consuming segments in the, of the region, automotive and construction, which respond to about 70% uh, of the steel demand in the region. The first rapidly embraced the shutdowns because it was already alerted by the head of the NEURS that the situation was worrisome, and also because their, um, their strategies in terms of production, raw materials, procurement, and sales are always medium to long-term views. And this level of stoppage that we are uh, facing uh, has, has no precedent. Uh, I don't know, never the automotive industry in our countries was stopped for one and a half months or even two months. So the restart is going to be also challenging. It's also going to be challenging because it's going to be almost like a second launch of, of, of different facilities. Uh, companies and we, all of us as value chain uh, players will need to focus on people, on safety, on quality. Regarding safety, we are going to have a new condiment, new condition to take care, not only industrial safety and health that it was all, uh, it is always a priority, but this coronavirus is putting on the table new standards, new things to take care of. Unfortunately, well, in my eyes, the big challenges for the next month to come for the steel industry, not only for the steel industry, but basically uh, I'm focusing now on the steel industry. Big problems, leaving aside typical problems we have here as politics in, in South America. Are two, it's basically the, the, the uncertainty which is resulting in, in a lack of demand. And afterwards, we're going to promptly face uh, a massive problem in liquidity along the, the supply chain. It's not easy for this uh, industry here. We, we have to locate ourselves. Who is steel industry in South America, right? We produce about 41, 42 million tons of steel per year. Uh, Brazil is responsible for about 78%, 8% of this production. And we count 1.7, 1.8% of the global steel industry. Just to, to have an historical basis uh, in our case in Brazil, we know that uh, a lot of uh, one of big, the biggest of of a challenge is the relationship between inflation and the exchange rate. Uh, another important point is the uh, the, the group like like us, uh, which has uh, unities in different parts of the world, and how can we consolidate that business in the overall perspective? So in our case in Brazil, our functional currency. What, what does it mean? The, the currency that we operate is Brazilian reais. Okay, even though we we are we can import a lot, we can export, but the Brazilian the, the currency of the business is really Brazilian reais. Challenge. Um, so besides what what Paulo said that the, the currency devaluation is offsetting the inflation, I do see chances with a weak currency uh, in nationalization bringing industry back to the country. This is a movement we already see since like 2018, I would say, a bit more strict and everybody's now calling for that, especially the automotive industry. Um, we do have more chances in exports. Yeah, that's a matter of fact, we are dependent, for example, agricultural product, products. And as Adriana said in her, in her presentation, that's 
when referring to the steel industry, we do have some kind of natural protection for, uh, against imports. In Peru, uh, mining sector uh, gives uh, more than 60% of our exports and also uh, give our more than 10% of our GDP. That is uh, so important. Uh, if we, uh, we start the operation in, in the next days, we could reduce the very negative impact that had uh, to uh, stop these, uh, these operations. No? About the dollar, uh, to be honest, uh, during the last years, uh, was uh, very stable. Yes, we might see a, a rebounding price pretty fast by the time we see activi activity picking up again. Um, supply demand, um, I also don't see uh, demand recovering that fast, uh, even though I would like to, I would like to see this happening pretty fast, but I don't see uh, because of multiple factors. I see several companies um, suffering, financially speaking, um, this paralyzation for, for two months or three months. So um, recovering activity at full pace will be gradual as well in, in this company. So demand wouldn't be that fast. Um, and steel production will be very linked to the automotive sector as the money that we have seen up to now are more related to organic growth and to, to, to grow the activity of the company. I am I am pretty sure that the money that we are going to see in the upcoming year are going to be more focusing, uh, capitalizing more efficiency in the value chain. So if I am dependent on some raw material or I am buying the market a raw material or, or, a, or a semi finished product, uh, try to not to buy it anymore and to produce myself in order to save cost at the end of the day. Uh, as we saw, part of the priority of the of the top management of different companies to capitalize those kind of efficiency and synergies. And I am pretty sure that the M&A that we are going to see in the upcoming uh, years are going to be more focused in capitalizing uh, synergies, in perhaps resizing the level of activity in a different side, but in a more efficient way, that in growing organically. Okay, but two or three weeks wouldn't make a big difference. We had uh, similar lockdown two years ago and with the strike of the truck drivers in 2018, which took away almost two weeks of our business and it didn't really impact our business. Uh, as it is now taking more than uh, five weeks already and probably going to stay like six, seven weeks of lockdown, the, the, the insecurity is probably, or well, uncertainty is probably going to increase impacting the customers, the, 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 the people's will to consume. Uh, what happened with us if uh, we have a lack of raw materials to work? You know that the steel business is, we cannot stop. We cannot stop our coke plants. We cannot stop 100% uh, of our blast furnaces and related equipments. Uh, and it will be very difficult that during the year, uh, in 2020, we will recover the uh, production that uh, we didn't make. The flexibility here on the production route is key in, in this scenario. Those operating electric arc furnace are better positioned to respond to any return of, of demand. Uh, this year is uh, forecasted to have a decrease in sales in around 23%. Next year is forecasted to uh, recover 10%. That means that, uh, talking about the war, in 2021, we will not reach the level of uh, car sales that we used to have last year. All the current uncertainty around uh, our market here is lack of demand. I don't see any changes in prices until end of June as it doesn't make any sense. So some pressure will come from Asia uh, with more steel being distributed around the globe wherever they can find market. 